Hello, my name is Mfike Makai, and I'm the CEO of Cobalt Metals Africa. Cobalt Metals is expanding its footprint in Southern Africa, particularly Zambia, Botswana, and Namibia, but we're not li limited to these jurisdictions. We are looking across Africa, and most, of, most important of all is for critical minerals, copper, cobalt, lithium, and nickel are our primary focus, and we look at the jurisdictions that have historical high geological prospectivity. These countries have a history of mining. There's a lot of existing knowledge in that space. And for, for our company, that's quite great because we're partnering not only with the governments there, but also with local stakeholders to basically start discovering new deposits to alleviate the crisis within the crit critical mineral supply. So the Mingompa project in Zambia, the deal was closed in December 2022. We have spent over $200 million in exploration to basically define the resource, define and delineate the resource, the copper resource there. The activities that will lead up to the mine build with hopefully production in the early 2030s include building the surface and underground infrastructure which will support uh, mine production. So that's your process plants, your shafts, your dewatering infrastructure, your infrastructure around the existing Copper Belt town, which is Chilida Bombwe. There are existing mines there, and that's, that means we are along the line of rail, and that is great for the project. So most of that expenditure is going to the capex of the project to make sure that in, within the next decade, we have an operating and producing asset. So there's going to be a lot of construction activity. There's going to be a lot of economic development around construction that will lead us into mine production. So outside Mingomba, we have a few target areas that we're focusing on in Northwestern province and on the Copper Belt province. We have partnered with Tertiary Minerals Zambia on the Konkola West um, asset, where we've drilled more than 2,000 meters. We're trying to define and understand the architecture of the geology of the Copper Belt. In Northwestern Zambia, we have partnered with Midnight Sun to look at the Dumbwa asset, and hopefully early next year, we're going to start drilling on that. We continue to look for other tenements and we apply for them just like any other company would or we work with JV partners just like any other company would. But what is really important is our ability to deploy the company's technology to explore in a really different manner using um, our machine learning abilities, using prediction and also reducing uncertainty in, in drilling. As you would know, when you're drilling on a tenement, there's a lot of uncertainty. How to drill, where to drill, how deep to drill, or what other, um, geo what other geological hypothesis you would test. Would you use a soil sample? Would you do a an aerial geophysical survey? Making those decisions is actually quite hard, and geologists in the last hundred years have been using the same techniques. We are able to use our computing capabilities, our data science capabilities, to make decisions of where to look, not only in Zambia, we're in Namibia, we're in southern Namibia. We're also looking at Botswana quite closely for opportunities there. So we're a private company, and if you look at the type of investors Cobalt has, it's many climate tech funds. We have quite a variety of innovative, strategic, and technology companies invested in us. And they're really invested in our capabilities, our technology capabilities. And that takes a long-term view. For many companies, raising capital is quite difficult. We're tapping into capital markets that have not traditionally been involved in mining. Yes, we're not yet a, a public company, but we look at the longevity of the projects. We are looking at making sure that these critical minerals help us transition over the next 50 years. So you cannot be committed to short-termism. We need these commodities more than ever to basically electrify the world. So we are fortunate to have investors that understand this, that take the long-term view and support us um, with that. And because we're basically innovating, there's a lot of R&D involved. We build a lot of our own tech within the company to basically have hardware skills, software skills, and also building models to help us understand geology. That's really different from many mining players, but we know that many mining players are also kind of looking in that space. There's different solutions. Um, others use software as a service. Uh, we don't do that. We, we put more skin in the game by building the tech that will transform how we explore in the future. So you cannot talk about downstream or midstream if you don't have the source. And there are not many players in the source. So you find that downstream people like automakers, and particularly automakers of EVs, need to know where are these materials are gonna come from. What's the battery technology going to look like? But if you look around the world, you will need copper. You will need it's anywhere more than 5x more copper than in a traditional transport vehicle today, an ICE. You will need cobalt, you will need lithium, you will need um, nickel. And there's also people say some of those you may not need, 
but the fact is further upstream you need the source so we play at the upstream we talk a lot to midstream and downstream um, players just to understand what they're doing in their technology so EV makers they need to make start understanding their battery technology they need to work with where the sources of the materials will come from and that you can only do with exploration we're one of the largest independent exploration companies that spends way more than 50 million dollars uh, a year across the world and that's why we're able to have 60 projects in 14 countries in Europe, in Africa, Australia and North America. I think the key message seems to remain collaboration with government. You can see African governments understand that the world is now looking at Africa more and more for these resources. But the governments also need, need to understand about what is going to happen with our countries to industrialize. The conduct of companies on the African continent cannot be as history has allowed it. We need to be more involved, more responsible, and also consider the fact that the youngest workforce in the world will be out of the African continent. So the key takeaways I think that I've picked from here is more collaboration, but transparency in, in dialogue. Intentions by companies must also be clear. For Cobalt, our, all our values speak to safety, anti-corruption, anti-discrimination, community support, environmental protection and integrity. And you have to live it. It's not just something that's on your website uh, and what you use to get investments. The leadership culture of these companies must live it. And we, I'm proud to say we do that, at least for the Cobalt Africa team and the Cobalt uh, rest of the world team, we live by those values.